Yo, Almost yo, there. yo. What's up, What's bro? Up? How's it going, man? It's good to see you. Good to see you too, man. It's it's been a minute. It's been a minute. It has. It has. Yeah. Then we can make work. And yeah, I mean, sorry that this is starting a half an hour later. We had some technical difficulties at the beginning of the one with All Bruce. Good. So All good. That was a great conversation, by the way. I was just like writing notes. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah yeah he's like he's a real og he it is sounds like it yeah he is. he's yeah yeah he's been around um yeah i mean that's the best part of these conversations you you know you come out with like you know like 25 albums <laughs> afterwards <laughs> yes exactly yeah, yeah yeah i i have like youtube open and i'm just like searching for <laughs> these artists yeah nice yeah. how um, are you brother Pretty good, pretty good. I think, yeah, yeah, I think I told you. I just, uh, I'm, I'm in Japan right now. This is actually my first oh, day here. Shit. I'm, I'm in Okinawa. Uh, so it's Okinawa. Okay. Two in the morning over here. Uh, oh, damn. I, <laughs> yeah, I think I'm 16 hours ahead of you, which is weird. Well, I uh, appreciate you staying up, bro. Um, yeah, it might be. I, I I would sort of like assume that you're also a little bit jet lagged too. Exactly, exactly. It's, so I'm, yeah. you know, kind of letting that carry me into the nights before I start getting used to this time zone. But uh, no, it's all good. I mean, these yeah. you know these conversations are the best. Um, how are you? How have the past you know couple months been since we you know had like a real? Things are well, man. Things are well. Um uh i believe the last time that we saw each other was at the summit wavelengths yeah and, and then we had I, th I think we had a call after that but yeah that was the last time we. that's that right person. yes yeah. yes yeah but i do remember that moment when we were just chatting uh after the summit and we mm -hmm. were just talking about different things you know primarily music but mm -hmm. then also different technologies too that mm -hmm. enable music. and so I would always remember that. I was like, oh, you know, like McKeegan, he's the dude. I should, I should talk to this guy more. <laughs> hey, I felt the same way, man. I appreciate that. Um, yeah. And, and, was... and you sent that Mirror article, too, um, about uh, Crate Coalition. Yeah. And yeah. we started talking about it. And I was like, oh, this is really cool, man. Like, like how, how can I join? <laughs> like, like, you know? And, 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 you, and you're like, well, why don't you come to one of our calls? I'm like, yeah. okay, sick. Let's do it. Yeah. And and now and now here we are. Um mm -hmm. yeah, really just you know, kind of orienting around this this for the record series is just, you know, having conversations with other music heads about their stories and the music that makes them and then kind of using that as as you know, the foundation, the like, you know, kind of connective tissue uh, you know, mm. between people and music and uh, yeah, we're in the process of of kind of archives, archiving that, creating a database that we want to visualize in an interesting way, so you can really see, you know, kind of a neural map of all these connections that come out of these conversations, which which will be cool once once it exists. Happening in the background, Eric and Mark, who are also on this call, are actually, you know, the ones captaining that. So yeah, I think it's gonna be cool. That's so sick. Um, it kind of reminds me of this website. I don't know if you you guys are probably have stumbled upon this. It's called everynoise.com. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it kind of like offers like a network of like different genres and different, I guess, noises and sounds. It's really cool. Is it something similar that you're visualizing? Yeah, sort of. I, th I think every noise, I think that's, I think that was done by like a Spotify engineer, right? And I think it's like every genre that's that exists in the Spotify database. If Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So this. Yeah. I guess it's kind of like that in terms of, of like how it's visualized, but it's you know it's like much more specific in terms of like you know like there would be uh, you know kind of a core like a hub you know say like there's a Mark Rito you know kind of hub and then like spokes coming out of it of like all of the mm -hmm. different artists that you mentioned in this conversation, all the different you know labels and record stores. And then over time, as you build that up, you can see other people who come on and in conversation, if they're also mentioning, you know, similar places or the same names, you can see how these people are connected through these music communities mm. or through, you know, the shared love of artists. And just like, 
you know, trying to showcase the importance of contextualizing these connections and visualizing them in a way because they're really abstracted away from the way that, you know, most people consume music today. So that's the idea. Yeah, yeah. I think it's important to visualize music um, and all it, all, and all its different layers of it. Like, mm. for example, because like music is a, such an ab abstract like art form, right? Like, mm -hmm. like you can you can sense it, you could you could hear it. In in some cases, you could also visualize it. But visualizing it, like as you were saying, like in the sort of like a map sort of like thing, um, I think it's helpful. Like for me, I, I I'm curious about um, other people's like music tastes, and mm -hmm. I, I found that w when I sort of like try to put one person say an artist, oh, this is what they listen to. But mm -hmm. then in reality, it's actually a big network of like maybe disparate genres even, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and it's always fascinating to me to see that. Yeah, totally. I mean, you know, we all, are, yeah, I mean, we all contain multitudes and, and, and you know, oftentimes that extends to the music that, that we listen to, especially, you know, I feel like people who describe themselves as, as crate diggers or music heads or whatever are interested in exploring a lot of different musical styles, you know. Mm, right, right, yeah. Like for me, it's like I've always been interested and fascinated by new genres and new hybrids mm -hmm. coming out. Um, and at the same time, you know, it's almost like um, like forwards backwards is sort of like how I see it. Like in terms of like time and eras, it's like I want to know and I want to be in the know of like all these hybrid genres that are unfolding and are emerging. And at the same mm -hmm. time too, I also want to study the past because the past gives us a base, mm -hmm. you know, to sort of like understand what's going on. But then totally. at the same time too, understanding the stories behind also, um, kind of like, I don't know, it, it, it enriches my understanding uh, of, of music, both as a listener, an enjoyer of it, and also mm -hmm. a creator of it. And yeah. I, I mean, you probably know this, McKeegan. It's like there is, like, it, it to me, it 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 challenges the notion of like what is original, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I think for me, where I'm at, I think that there is no such thing as an original. Mm -hmm. More like most of us are really uh, capturing or or are inspired by things that we have heard you know, mm -hmm. and we're sort of like combining them in unique ways. And when we present it, sometimes that is seen as original, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but, um, but yeah, yeah. I, I wonder, do you, do you see it the same way too, or? Uh, yeah, totally. I think this may have been, or at least tangential to what we were talking about when we were chatting at the summit and, and just this idea that, that, you know, everything is a remix, nothing is original because like it's, and I've been thinking about this a lot and writing about it a lot in, in the context of AI, um, mm. because, you know, we are training AI on the things that we, we have made and learned, and we, we are feeding it with ourselves, essentially. And it, mm -hmm. is le it is learning and regurgitating things in a very similar way that humans mm -hmm. do. I mean, we spend our lives uh you know walking around consuming information and absorbing that and that over time like creates who we are and over time like like our subconscious uh is is kind of coalescing all this information and then spitting something out that is unique to us because mm -hmm. our experience is unique um so it feels original yes. even though it's just this this huge aggregation of like everything that we've ever ever experienced which yeah so I, mm. I yeah i mean i totally i totally agree <laughs> yeah totally and, and you know it kind of reminds me of this converse conversation that i had with a uh, a record shop owner um uh there was this record shop um a pop-up record shop that is one of my favorites here in la it's called el merchante um mm. i think it means the merchant um mm -hmm. and um they specialize in like latin American music, right? Mm -hmm. And so I was talking to Osmar, the 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 owner, and mm -hmm. I was like, "Bro, I don't have I don't have any sense of like what is Latin jazz, you know?" Mm -hmm. And he was asking me, "Um, yeah, well, I got you, bro. Um, well, you know, 
what are you interested in? You know, w- w- are you a musician? Are you a collector? And I, I told him, I'm a musician. Sometimes I sample stuff, or most of the time I sample stuff. Like, ah, okay, here's a record. He pulls up one. I don't. Mm. I forgot what record it was, but but he pulled up one. Cool, you know. And he was like, what's special about this record is that um, there, there was like a backstory which I'm now forgetting. Mm. But the the thing that stood out to me was he was like, this was uh, sampled by Bad Bunny. You know, mm. we all know Bad Bunny. You know, yeah, big, yeah. big artist. And you know. In my head, Bad Bunny, Bad Bunny is a, a young guy, a young dude. But yet, you know, from his, I'm, I'm, I'm now guessing here and assuming here, um, his background, you know, being a Latino, you know, uh-huh. um, sort of like informed, you know, possibly, I'm guessing, might have heard this when, when he was younger, perhaps, you know, um, and sort of like, oh, that, that's cool. Like, let, let me incorporate it now into a song. I forgot what song exactly it is, but... But yeah, it sort of just like made me realize that as musicians, we, we all pull from all these different sources, you know? Mm-hmm. Totally. Yeah, and I, th- I think it's, it's, it feels like it's sort of coming to, to a head and challenging the way we you know, think about copyright and what you know, we should be able to, to own as individuals since all of this information that we are aggregating to create comes you know, from other people and other creations. And I think that's mm-hmm. it's it's like kind of coming to a head, you know, in these conversations with AI and what what they're doing. But I, I this is also a nice segue. I would love to hear more um, about like your work, specifically like you know, you know through Song Camp as the head of community and thinking and you know if you could talk a little bit about a what Song Camp is, b uh, you know the experiment of of having you know like a headless band and how you think about that and and yeah i mean just kind of your experience throughout is coming in to the community becoming the head of community and just talking a little bit about that yeah no totally um maybe like a brief background of, of like you know where i come from um yeah, yeah, might please, be please. useful in adding yeah, to yeah. the story of song camp i think before i joined song camp before um, before everything, like I, I'm a musician and I've been doing it since like 2013. Um, mm. And so I have accumulated like all these experiences, like from production to touring, et cetera, et cetera. And I think that branched on to like other expressions too, you know, um, such as, you know, filmmaking, um, graphic design, um, you know, web, web design um, and, 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 you know, coding. And so I think like all throughout this, my, my journey as an artist, a musician, I've always sort of like interfaced with technology and always wanted and craved for like the cutting edge. How could I, all, how could I incorporate the cutting edge technology into my own work? Um, mm. Because I feel like technology is part of our tool stack. You know, it's part of, of the, the uh, it's, a, it's a paintbrush, it's a palette, you know, that mm. we could use. Mm. And so... 2021 happened and you know we all know we're all coming from the pandemic during that time and there's this huge energy um from from musicians you know looking into like web3 uh, mm-hmm. um and crypto and all that stuff um and from that moment emerged like song camp which is an mm-hmm. idea uh, seeded by matthew matthew chaim um and you know it, it it's a community that um, during that time, it was a community that was just exploring what does this look like for musicians. And, you know, and we experimented. Um, the first experiment, which we call Genesis, was a group of um, three bands, three musicians each, creating a song together. And, uh, you know, with, with like a, a time bound songwriting camp. And then at the back end of it, we sell it as an NFT, you know. Um, and that was a great experiment. It sold out. Um, and during that time, dude, it, it was like, you know, the pricing of NFTs was, is not the same as what we have now. Um, mm-hmm. It's like, it's, it's, it's sort of like, it's easy to see like, like one ETH, like, like reserve price, you know, yeah. and people are buying yeah. it, you know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's wild. <laughs> um, it, it is, it is. And, and looking back, right, it's like, it's wild times, you know. Yeah. Um, and then after that, we have like two, uh, you know, two more camps. Um, the second one is Electra, 
the last one is Chaos, which you you know mentioned is the headless band. Mm-hmm. Um, and so all all throughout these journeys, we sort of like solidified and clarified, you know, what is our mission? You know, w- w- what is Song Camp? How do we share what Song Camp is to other people? Um, and so currently, we call ourselves an artist um, collective and also a laboratory. You know, ex- mm-hmm. experimenting with new technologies um, to figure out new ways to experience music, to distribute music, to also, you know, um, put value in, in music. You know, um, that would help the artist. So moving, moving, moving forward, like the, the you know, headless, the headless band chaos is one of our most ambitious experiments. Mm-hmm. Um, we have seventy-seven folks uh, yeah. part of this whole headless band. You know. And when I say band, I don't. I also mean all the other members who are doing things that are non-musical. You know, right. our engineers. You know, our economists, our our, our our graphic designers. You know, all of them were all part of this band, and it was definitely chaotic. <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, there were there was a lot of like good songs that came out of it. Um, I think some of the songs it's really hard to put a. A pin on like what genre it is. Um, mm-hmm. It feels like it's post genre, um, and yeah, b- building that um, it was it, w- it was a huge success. I would say um, I, I you know like I don't I don't some sometimes I feel cringy equating success with like monetary terms, yeah. but sometimes I think it's helpful to also like frame it too. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe for for some folks that 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 is more helpful. Um, when we released the project, the during that time, our gross sales for the chaos packs was about five hundred, six hundred k, which was huge. You know, yeah. that was in twenty twenty two. Yeah, and all of those proceeds were were split. You know, across like all these other members, all these members of the seventy seven person band, and so, but it was also complicated, dude. You know, there's 77 <laughs> yeah. people. You know? Yeah, chaos. 77. Chaos. Opi- it's chaos. 77 yeah. opinionated people. You yeah. Know, how do you how do you do that? You know. Yeah. Um, it was hard, and, and there was definitely a lot of like challenges along the way, but we learned from it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, one of the most interesting things to to me is is kind of the way that that you handled the attribution as this was. You know, it, this this was attributed to the headless band, not to any of the individuals. And there was, so was you know, the way it was, what there were like three different. You were part of like three different bands, like over the songwriting camp. Is that right? Like you made three songs correct. with three different bands throughout. Is that that's how it worked? That's correct. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. So so we split it in like different acts. Um. So the songwriting camp itself is roughly about like three to four weeks. So mm-hmm. each week is an act. In each act, you are uh, relegated to like one band, and then after the act ends, you now move on to the uh, another band, different mm-hmm. members completely reshuffling. Um, and each act has its own theme. Like act one is birth, act two is. Uh, now I'm forgetting. <laughs> uh, you know, birth. Uh, Live die <laughs> <laughs> live laugh love um yeah <laughs> birth like i think the last was like entropy um uh-huh. and uh-huh. and there was also like rebirth too um mm. but but each act has its own theme and that acted as like a prompt for for musicians to actually create songs that are in line with that theme right um but yeah it was it was really cool yeah totally were you playing music like during that as as well, like were you part of the bands or were you just captaining you know the community side of things? No, yeah, I, I wish, I wish. I mean, uh, you know, um, I think it's always fun uh, to be part of like creating music with folks. Um, but you know, my involvement with Song Camp so far has been more on the operational ad- administrative side of things, um, community management side of things, um, mm-hmm. and that's. And that's intentional for me because, you know, um, I think just kind of like rewinding back before I dived in into contributing to Web3, I was sort of like at a crossroads, you know, I was sort of like, and this is around like 2020, I was like, 
what is there? Like I've I've done, I've toured, I've released albums, you know, I performed, you know, I, I've I've gotten some following. Um, what else is out there? And it felt sort of like, you know, kind of like I felt limited, you know. Um, and that's why I sort of like experiment with other expressions and other forms. But then, you know, once I joined Song Camp, I, I made a decision. You know what? I think that it's 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 useful. You know, if we are running camps, you know, to have someone be a touch point for certain things, you know, so that artists can just purely create, you know, mm-hmm. the admin mm-hmm. stuff, the operation stuff, I'll take care of it. No worries, mm-hmm. you know, and they see that as a contribution to my fellow musicians, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so, yeah, I did not participate in any of the songwriting, although I did some remixes on the back end, oh, and cool. all that stuff. So, yeah. Cool. Well, are you still making music outside of that outside of Sonka? Yes, I am. Yeah, there, there's this new project that uh, I've been sort of like it has been brewing since like 2022, um, and I've had some really fun collaborations with uh, Mark De Clive Low, um, mm-hmm. who is like a jazz pianist, jazz keyboardist, uh, also producer, and then Levi Downey, who is part of Chaos. Um, and m- most of my music that I made previously uh, under my own name uh, is more sort of like pop infused, like dance music. Mm-hmm. Um, this new project, uh, which I'm calling Memory States, is more, cool. I would say, satisfies my love for like jazz and, and world and, and, and Afrobeat and, you know, j- you know and, so, and so I wanted to explore what that would look like, but also sort of like, I don't know, like y- you were mentioning AI earlier on top of this call. I was like, how mm-hmm. I also integrate these tools into this new entity, you know? Right. And so, so yeah, you know, that's an idea that I'm still exploring right now. Um, yeah. Cool. Well, I'm excited to I'm excited to hear more. I'd really I'm, I I had a really interesting conversation with Mark DeClavlo at some point ah. last year. Yeah, he's a pretty fascinating dude. Yeah, he's a cool dude. Yeah, yeah. He's in Japan, though, no? Right well, he, now? I don't know if he's there right now. I know he... That's that's where he grew up, right? And then he like moved to New Zealand or something, and then, then moved so. to the States. Yeah. Um, but anyways, yeah. no, I had, yeah, yeah, I had a really fascinating conversation with, with him about like culture and identity and you know, like how music relates to both and has been like a really, you know, interesting intersection for, for, for him. But, but anyways, that's cool. I'm excited to, you know, see mm-hmm. how that manifests that project. Memories I'll send you some project. demos, bro. Uh, please. I'll send you some do. demos. Yeah. Yeah. We, we actually I would love ch- to hear your thoughts about it. I would, would love to, to check it out and share it. We actually have, we actually have a share your work, uh, channel, channel? in here in the Create Coalition. Mm-hmm. Um, if if you're if you're open to sharing it to to a few people, um, otherwise yeah, I will I will, I will take it I will take it either either way. <laughs> I would love to check it out. Um, cool, um, cool. So yeah, I mean, would love to hear now more. Kind of switching over to a little bit of more about like your own music listening and music discovery processes. And mm. um, I'm I'm curious. Uh, when that kind of started for you and you know what the modes of music discovery the modes of music discovery that you leverage most you know today are like how does that look for you Mm. yeah i think in general i would say it's multi-pronged you know the Mm. the approach um like 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 most of us i would say you know living in this modern world um Mm -hmm. but, but starting out dude it's like you know, I'm a child of the 90s. Um, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, you could see me as like an elder millennial, I would say. <laughs> so, yeah. so I didn't grow up collecting records, mm-hmm. but I currently collect records. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so that medium is sort of like, that medium is, uh, when I was younger, it was so foreign to me. It's like an yeah. alien sort of like, what is that? It's a fucking huge and, you know, it's, you know, nah. <laughs> yeah. um, so cassettes, dude, you know, like, like, like mm. just like, you know, like like uh, um, 
you know, trading cassettes with like different folks. Like I had pen pals before when oh, I was cool. living in the Philippines. I grew, I grew up in the Philippines. Okay. Um, but then, but then, you know, um, when I was young, t- a teenager, I had like pen pals, you know, um, from the U.S., from everywhere, and they would send me like mixtapes, and we would trade each other mixtapes. And, and during cool. that time, I was into like punk and ska, you know. Um, <laughs> nice. Ska was big in the '90s. Yeah. Is it is it also big in the UK? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I was in the U.S. like you know during ah. the '90s, so I remember the ska days. But Mark is on here. He's from Scotland. He could. He can maybe let us know oh, how big shit. Scott was. Yes, it certainly was, he says. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, the UK folks have the two tone era. Well, but but you know, um but yeah, you know, like like I think in late mid to late nineties was sort of like the third wave of ska and I was super into that dude. I had mm. zines and stuff. I wrote my own zines, oh. I collected zines, bought cassettes from like shady distributors. Like mail order, <laughs> mail order <laughs> cassettes. Nice. Yeah, man. And then, and then I moved on to like CDs and CD mixtapes and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, and then Napster happened, right? Soul Seek, right. LimeWire, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And, and that's when I started like downloading stuff and then burning them onto CD. Mm-hmm. Um, and how did I discover? It, it's usually like word of mouth. Um, mm-hmm. Some of it is the, the early internet the early sort of like very early blogs and all that stuff. Um, mm-hmm. And then that's when I thought, oh man, the internet is powerful. You know, um, <laughs> yeah. not only can you download songs, right? Mm-hmm. You can mm-hmm. also like look, look through like different artists and, and mm-hmm. you know, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And then, and then that branched on into like the whole sort of like, uh, like blog house era, right? Mm-hmm. In the 2000s, early 2000s to, to mid 2010s. Um, and that's when blogs are sort of like provided a way, you know, provided the curation too, you know. Oh, you know, I like this blog. I like their taste. Let me see what's on there, you know. And that informed like my musical taste. I was also part of different communities during that time too. Mm. Um, like communities like SPF 420, which is like a internet, like underground, like weird electronic music sort of oh. community. Um, that also informed my and then now fast forward to where we're at right now with algorithms and, and YouTube, Spotify, Web3, all the stuff. It's a combination, you know? Mm. Like, the YouTube algorithm has become so good at knowing <laughs> what I like that I tend to listen to whatever it spits out, you know? <clears throat> oh, you like this? Or oh, maybe you would like this one. You know, listen, oh, shit, I'm into this, you know? Uh. Um, which is kind of funny, dude, because it's like the YouTube algorithm sometimes inspires me to buy records yeah. it's almost like from digital to analog you know um yeah. sort of like pipeline <laughs> yeah um so so yeah right now how i discover music is word of mouth algorithm and also like yeah like sharing and talking with folks like yourself like what are you into blah blah you know um yeah so those three right now cool cool um that makes sense i think that's you know approximately you know how i operate is as well talking to people and then it's hard to escape the algorithm <laughs> you know yeah yeah it's, it's always there um uh cool so if, so here's the question i mean you heard this question when i asked bruce as well but um who are three artists of note that you heard for the first time in the past year Three artists of note. Damn. Okay, I'm gonna cheat a little bit here. I'm <laughs> going to pull up my Spotify like. It's totally fair. You can do so, that. So three artists that I've recently heard. Or wait. Yeah, just it again, like, bro. Like just like three impactful artists that you have recently heard for the first time. They don't even have to be like new artists. They could be someone you know could have been somebody from the '70s that you just stumbled across or something. But just like three new artists like like for you that have been impactful you know they caught your ear mm, yeah okay copy that um one would be this dude or dudes um brazilian dudes robson george and lincoln olivetti and 
I believe these guys were uh, were producers um, back in the day, um, and this album from the nineteen from nineteen eighty two really stood out to me. And mm. it's only this year that I actually heard of them, and I've heard of them through this in- Instagram post. There's this guy that I follow on Instagram that showed like like shows like records, and he highly recommended this album. And I was like, okay, let me check it out, and I loved it, dude. It's like it's like jazz fusion, uh. um, but with like a Latin like tang to it. You know, uh. it's like because they're Brazilian, right? Like there's a little bit of like samba on there, like a little bit mm-hmm. of bossa, but then there's a lot of like funk too. Mm-hmm. And then I love it, dude. I love I love I love it so much. It's all like instrumental, or, or actually, it's it's primarily instrumental, but with a little bit little bit of vocals. And usually the vocals are just like humming. It's like, bum, bum, ba, da, ba, ba, da. you know, like, like, like mm-hmm. no lyrics. It's just like mm-hmm. humming, you know, and I love it, yeah. you know. And so that stood out to me. Okay, um, cool. I love that. Who else, dude? Uh, I'm, I'm looking at uh, my Spotify. Dang. There's just so many, man. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh. Another one, um, Malfino from the UK. Okay. Uh, Malfino is a uh, a cumbia yeah. band. Okay, um, love cumbia. But with like, a, I bro, oh, oh my god, I'm I'm like obsessed <laughs> right now with cumbia. That's like, yeah. and so and so hearing this young UK band executed perfectly, like like mm. staying true to the cumbia sound, but mm. with like a it, it has like a modern twist to it. You know, mm. it has that weirdness in it. You know, mm. that really stood out to me. Um, cool. So, Malfino, the, okay. their latest EP, yeah, Sueño is, okay. is fire. Yeah. Um, and then one more, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, one, one more. <laughs> one more, one more. Okay, okay. Ah, the. Okay, let's see here. Do, ah, there's this compilation that... Uh, okay, so there's this compilation. I believe it's only in vinyl, but mm-hmm. the separate tracks are on Spotify. It's called, it's called Penrose. P-E-N and then Rose, the flower. One word. Mm-hmm. And this is a collection of like soul music like like old school soul sound um mm-hmm. think marvin gay mm-hmm. think sort of like you know james brown sort of thing mm-hmm. but with sort of like yeah it's really very soulful but what stood out to me is that this compilation is mostly west coast bands like mm-hmm. the u.s west coast right like mm-hmm. um a lot of like soul music specifically is really big in the Latino community um, here here in LA, you know. Mm. And so when you see like lowriders, you see like you know like like parties, um, mm-hmm. they they sometimes play like really loud like soul music. And mm-hmm. this one, this compilation is like a uh, a new school version of that, like young bands like playing old school soul. Um, I love it too. It's very, it's very radio friendly, you know. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Uh, that's a great trio. And it feels like, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. I mean, it also feels right up my alley. So I'm very excited to dive into these to these records. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> yes, sir. What What uh, do you listen to? I'm I'm curious if I could like point the mic at you. Yeah, lately. you can. Um. Oh man, I'm always the worst at answering questions. So, so I like to ask them. <laughs> um. I mean, his. I, I listen to all kinds of stuff. I mean, I, mm. you know, I listen to a lot of Brazilian stuff, so that's that's why that piqued Ooh. my interest. My partner is Brazilian, so. Oh, um, nice. Yeah, listen. I listen. I've been listening to uh, to a lot of jazz. I went to this amazing, mm. this like amazing cafe slash antique store today earlier today, just here in Okinawa, okay. and just run by this guy who's who's like eighty years old, didn't speak any English, and. And it's just like, you know, the chillest space, all of these old antiques. Um, 
just all over the place. People, you know, smoking cigarettes inside and like the coolest jazz is just everywhere. Ooh. You know, filtering this through the space as people drink coffee and tea. Um, and feel like, like that environment is like, if you can, if, like that, that is what I aspire to, like to be in often. Uh, so, you know, I love jazz and I mean, all kinds of stuff like the punk and post-punk, um, the Bruce is talking about, I'm also, you know, big into that stuff. Uh, you know, I love electronic music, both house and techno. Uh, I'm not giving you any specifics, just like more genres, you know, like a lot of, you know, kind of like post-classical, uh, you know, film score type stuff, you know, like Niels from all the far and outs. That's, um, you know, one oh, of the things, yes. uh, so that stuff, uh, you know, can't, it can't get enough of, of that type of music, like, you know, very pretty piano music, minimalist kind of stuff. Um, uh, I think that's like, I'm also going to cheat yeah. some of the stuff that I've been. I, I have to. a feeling that our tastes are kind of close to each other. If there's like, if this is your node, my node is probably like close to yours, I think. <laughs> yeah, cool. <laughs> I mean, it seems like it from what you said so far, I, I'd have to say so. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Um, all right, cool. Now I'm going back to, to asking you questions. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's let's see. Okay, here's one. Who Who's the most underappreciated artist from your favorite music, music decade? Underappreciated artist from a music decade. Okay. We, we yeah, from your favorite music decade. From my favorite music decade. Mm -hmm. Okay, my favorite music decade currently is the seventies. Um, okay. I think there's something about the seventies, right? Like, well, I was born in the seventies. Um, mm -hmm. I guess towards the end of the seventies, but you know, sort of like listening to the music of the seventies or or. All of the music that I find like really groundbreaking was from the seventies. I mean, except for the modern music that is being made today. Mm -hmm. um, and so, I don't know, man. There, there's probably something there. It's probably the, the, the drugs. You know, people are just like, using <laughs> yeah. drugs heavily. You know, yeah. they're just like heavily inspired. You know, something to do with um, it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know if this dude um, is is. Um, underappreciated but this dude raul de souza um the like, key is like a, a jazz trombonist um mm -hmm. is 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 really fascinating because he has a lot of albums and you could easily find his record on different like record shops um and, and maybe there's something there because it's just like there's just so much supply that people are like, oh, yeah, I, I could easily find that. But this guy is a fucking genius, man. Mm. Um, like, most of his tracks are groovy as hell, you know? Cool. Maybe it's the 70s, you know, you, you want it to be, like, funky and groovy. But, um, but this guy, even though trombone is his main instrument, he has a really solid understanding of the groove, you know? Um, and, and, yeah. He stands out to me as one of the, I guess, standout artists from that decade. Seven. Raul de Souza. Cool. I mean, yeah. he's 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 definitely underappreciated in my book because I have never heard of him. <laughs> mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, <laughs> let me let me link a uh, a Discogs uh, artist link. But yeah. Amazing. Thank you. Really sick. Uh, I'm gonna have all kinds of music to listen to after after this. I'm so excited. Yes, sir. <laughs> um, awesome. Thank you. Um, okay, who's who's um what's one one music community uh that you're particularly fond of? Without talking about Song Camp, we already talked about Song Camp. Well, one that you're not part of, but one that you admire. Um who who and why? Like who do you want to give a shout to? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, there's so many, dude. But um, one community that stands out to me, um, and they're very and they're highly legible too, both in aesthetic and in sound, is PC music. You know, mm -hmm. um, 
and they've been at it for maybe since uh, 2014, perhaps mm-hmm. um, up until now. And when they released their 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 first few singles, right? You know, Ag Cook, Sophie, mm-hmm. uh, she was part of it too. Um, all these like heavyweights, right? Mm-hmm. Um, were releasing through this label slash collective, and all of them have, even though they all sound sort of like similar, their approaches are also different from each other. But there's this shared sort of like aesthetic that they're building, and that translates and has informed. The, the the current young younger generations you know i think mm. about the hyper pop movement you can't talk about the hyper pop movement without referencing pc music you know they they were the og hyper pop you know and so you know from from that moment from the 2010s up until now i feel like they're always like pushing the boundaries of like what electronic music or dance music or pop music sounds like and mm. so shout outs to them i'm i'm always like incomplete attention whenever they release stuff like what is this let, mm. let, let me you know let me let me so yeah pc music for sure stands out amazing cool i think that's a great answer um all right cool and here's uh you know the the question of the round uh what are your you know you're going to desert island and you get to bring three records with you what are they <laughs> the desert oh. island question yeah mm, yes yes ah my gosh okay again bro i'm i'm forgive me i'm i'm cheating cheating right now so <laughs> i'm just can. looking at like my discogs collection <laughs> uh because because you said records and so now I, i'm just zooming in on just like records um this album three but, three albums yeah however you want to interpret it okay okay three albums um Chico Che y La Crisis, um, Mexican artist from the 70s, 80s, um, stands out to me. Like oh. there, This specific album, Pobrecito Mi Cigarro, is really cool because it's like cumbia, but rock. Um, and then he sings in a really raspy voice. Um, mm. Fucking amazing, dude. Um, oh. So that's one. Um, another one is Nugini. Um, I believe these guys from from Europe, but I don't know yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, 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 you know, you know. I do, um, but I, I can't remember where they're from. Yeah, it, it, I think they're Italian. I think they're Italian. I think you're right. Let me just. Yeah. Yes. It looks. It looks like Naples. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, so they're. I, I think this is their first album um nova napoli um is is fire like each track mm-hmm. is a banger you know um like italo disco funky mm-hmm. disco shit love it um and then damn what else uh sheesh um I, I'm, I'm picking albums that i listen front to back yeah, yeah. so uh Ah. <laughs> I, I'm I'm now now I'm cheating cheating a little bit because you know um everyone knows this album. Burial Untrue. Oh, um, oh yeah. That's not cheating. Yeah. That's it. That's incredible. <laughs> it's incredible good. Yeah. yeah, it is, it is. You can uh you know bring out your demons a little bit when you know you're on the island listening <laughs> listen to that. <laughs> a thousand percent dude yeah yeah, yeah. I, I think i covered like different emotions there like from happy to joyful to like fucking dark you know yeah yeah, yeah. which you're, you're probably gonna experience all of those things while while you're on the island so true. like it's a good that's true good trail. um no that's a great trail and i don't i don't know the mexican album that you said so again thank you i'm going to listen to it after this yes sir um cool so now it's just you know kind of wrapping up stuff like where you know where can people listening check out your work your music what you're doing at song camp all all of the above yeah for sure um so i'm gonna drop some links in the chat um cool the first one is i'm part of this collective called club pacific and we are a collective of djs um playing only vinyl um 
and right. we have these like mixtapes that we release every two weeks or so. Um, so please check that out. Um, it's quite eclectic from jazz to Latin stuff to, I don't know, cumbia, reggae, lo-fi, beats, everything. Mm. Um, and then the second one, I think, ties to um, this thing that you were talking about earlier, uh, McKeegan, uh, about AI and the possibilities mm -hmm. for musicians. Um, I wrote like a, a long-ass essay about that. So oh, cool. please check that out. Yeah, um, read this. And then Song Camp. Um, we are song.camp. Um, that's our website. And we have uh, a new project upcoming. Um, I believe starting September, um, where, where we have a new camp upcoming with new, um, we're exploring different ways to sort of like distribute this. And so, mm -hmm. um, uh, very excited about that. I, I can't tell more details because we're still building it. Sure. But song.camp is where you will find us. Cool. And yeah, socials. I'm Matt Mark Redito at Mark Redito everywhere. Okay. So, yeah. Cool. Amazing. Thank you for that context. I'm excited to see what uh, you know what the next thing coming out of Song Camp looks like. You said yes, it's happening man. in like and in in uh, September. Correct. Yeah, September. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The, the start of uh, the songwriting camp, and then we're building a front end for it. Um, and yeah, it, it's gonna have a cool like mechanic. Um, there's a cool little game inside of it too. So, uh, so I'm we'll sure. see how that goes. I'm yeah. sure. I'm sure. I loved like a the like opening a pack of baseball cards type thing that you did with the last one uh you know where you actually had yeah. to open it burn it yeah that was that was cool i really appreciated that that was fun that yeah. was fun yeah yeah um Sick. Yeah. and yeah i mean finally uh who who's another music head that comes to mind who we should have in the show <sighs> another music head hmm Another music head. Dang. Well, well, so are, are we talking about a musician also or an enjoyer? Like what sort of... Uh, give me some Spectrum more is, context. Spectrum is wide. Uh, you know, I've had everybody mm. from, you know, DJs um, to, you know, music journalists. Like, you know, like we just had Bruce to... Um, last one, you, you know, this guy Ben Steidel, who who owns who owns the Brooklyn Record Exchange, you know, like a record shop in Brooklyn. Um, it, you know, kind of like this really big spectrum with Caitlin Davies, you know, who I think you probably know from like FWB and uh, Refraction. Indeed. So um, yeah, just like people who care about music very you know very deeply and uh you know especially like the human element of of wanting to be in community community around it share it you know discover it with. love it love it i have two recommendations cool if that's okay with you yeah, yeah two one days. yeah one is daedalus um from la um part of like the low end theory like movement um mm -hmm. but daedalus is is known for like really like um experimental sort of like beats um and they think you know different genres like he, they explore different genres um across different like releases um and they are currently uh, a faculty at uh berkeley college of music oh, talking cool. about teaching electronic music production i believe um they're a great guy to interview very thoughtful okay. very intentional um and sort of like very, uh, I guess, medium agnostic, you know, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. very open. So mm -hmm. I recommend Daedalus for sure. Not only okay. his music, but him as a person too. Okay, um, cool. And then uh, who else? Uh, Dadabots. Um, I, I'm curious of like, because I had Dadabots on my podcast um, mm. a few months back. Mm -hmm. But we didn't get to talk about like what they were listening to, um, mm -hmm. and so I'd be curious like what that dude listens to for sure, because <laughs> like you know what I'm saying like like it might it might be obvious because he listens to like 
I think the the AI that he builds like generates like death metal and all that stuff. But I I'm curious like how he thinks about you know music enjoyment and also like music creation. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, those those two folks. Okay, amazing. Thank you. Yeah, it's always interesting. You you, you know even if you spend time interviewing you know like music makers and you you, you oftentimes you oftentimes talk about the work or the projects that are coming out or like maybe you'll ask like you know who's your biggest inspiration you know that's a pretty common question but you don't really dive into, into like the pit of like the music like like let's just talk about the music you know so, yes. um, uh yeah no those are great you know thank you for the recommendations of course man yeah and thank you for having me here thank you for this space and thanks Absolutely. for yeah yeah you're a great host and i love <laughs> like i was binging i was binging through like the different episodes and so yeah man thank you for for building this space you know, shout outs to uh the audience mark eric thanks <laughs> for sticking around and um yeah man too many more yeah absolutely here's too many more thanks for being here you know thanks for the time and uh you know let's chat again soon yes sir yes sir definitely all right all right man take care be well peace enjoy japan thank you thank you i will i will all right man take care peace out